Hello and welcome to the TomCast. I'm Tom, President and Dictator for Life of 515comics.com, coming to you straight after Planet Comic Con, uh, the day after, the recovery day, which I'm glad I took the day off because as you can hear, I didn't make it through the weekend without catching a little bit of that good old convention crud. Uh, honestly, it's probably more to do with the changes in weather and everything and Whatever, doesn't matter, I'm a little sick, but I'm, I'm already feeling a lot better than I was last night. So I, I wanted to do this because this weekend, this, this uh, 2017 Planet Comic Con, was maybe one of the worst conventions that I have had personally. Um, maybe ever? Maybe ever. Uh, it was very disheartening, um, and it was uh, quite a struggle and it kind of left me reeling. Um, so I've had a little bit of time to think about it and I, I wanted to make a video, a vlog, about just what my experience was and what I can do to improve my experience going to cons in the future. Um, to start out, I don't want this episode to just be me whining about what didn't go right at Planet Comic Con because honestly, that that's not what I want to say that's not what I want it to be um, so first let's start talking about some of the positive things uh, I got to share a table with my buddy Trey Baldwin of the Baldwins um, and that was great we had a good time we traveled uh, to the show with our friend Austin Hamblin a very talented comic writer uh, who just kind of hung hung out with us and helped split the cost of the hotel and stuff and was was generally just kind of a travel bud which was fun. Uh, and I got to see a lot of my friends at the show, uh, including my bro DH and her bro Greg, who are always excellent to see and hang out with. Uh, and I got to touch base with a couple comic artists I haven't seen in a while, uh, including Aaron Walther, who uh, he and I traded volume twos of our web comics. Uh, so he does Zero's Heroes, which I did a review of the first graphic novel a while ago. And now I've got the second, which is great. And so now he's got the second volume of X2s. And he and I talked a little bit about he's starting up a YouTube thing and doing interviews and stuff. So that's great. I'm very excited for him. So it's always nice to touch base with people that I know. And I, I got to see a lot of really cool people uh, at the show. Uh, lots of great cosplay, lots of friends, lots of people I recognize, including, oh my gosh, probably the coolest thing that happened at the show was my friend Shiloh, dressed up as Elle from Nextus, which is awesome. And I'm pretty sure I've said in the TomCast before that like, that's, uh, a, a, like, that's a sign of you're making it when someone cosplays as one of your characters. So it was so cool of her to do that. I was so surprised. Uh, and it was, just, it was just delightful. So it wasn't all bad, but let's talk about what was kind of bad. Again, I want to stress this is not like Planet Comic Con's fault. This is just problems that I had during the show. So one, I was sharing a table, which is normally something I really, really like to do because, well, a lot of reasons, but, but mostly it's just a great way to cut costs, help out another artist, cut costs, um, and have someone at your table who like is excited to be at the show. Like that's really great. Um, our tables were six foot wide, which is not easy to share. With only three feet of width to work with, it's very difficult to get all the stuff that I have displayed. Not to mention that I'm working with some new materials. I've never taken hoodies to a show before. I've only taken one mask to one show before. Um, and so now I have a couple masks, I have hoodies, and so it's just kind of a different dynamic, and I'm not really sure how I want to lay stuff out. Um, so during the course of the weekend, I redressed the table. I have the table like three times at least, um, maybe four if you count the first day where I <laughs> like wouldn't leave it alone. Um, anyway, so that was just kind of a struggle. Uh, I didn't feel like we had a lot of room. I think that I'm not sure if Planet Comic Con has ever had bigger tables than six feet. Um, but a six-foot table is just really hard to share when you have two people who have a lot of merch that they want to put out on display. Um, so that was kind of a hurdle and a challenge to contend with. 
Another issue was the size of the show itself, like the physical size of the space um, had increased. So since I've been going to Planet Comic Con, each year they have, it seems, they've been purchasing more and more of Bartle Hall in Kansas City to rent out for the convention. Uh, and this year they had the whole hall, which if you've never been there, it's a lot. It's like four city blocks long, I think. I mean, at least. Maybe it's more. I don't know. It's big. Uh, and so it was pretty, uh, it was, and it was full. Like, it was full of people. So Artist Alley was bigger, or at least longer, than it had ever been. Uh, and there were just more vendors, more artists, more crafters, just more stuff, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I kind of felt like it made it so that people were a little bit, like, not as sure where they wanted to spend their money. And so since I was at the extreme edge of the... Well, and it might not have even mattered where I was placed. Uh, just the fact that there was so much to see, uh, I think it was very hard for attendees to, like, know what to do. Also, because it was so physically big, I didn't see people again. Like, there were a lot of people who I did see once, um, and then that was it. And, like, they might have stopped and said hello, and I might have given them my pitch. Uh, but, uh, but then they were gone because there's so much to see. How are they going to make it back around for a second sweep unless they're there the whole weekend? Um, so that was something I noticed. I did not see as many people making multiple rounds and kind of deciding what they want to buy. So there's people there who are willing to spend money who might be interested in my comic, but doesn't matter because there's so much for them to see they, they never come back around so I've got to grab them while they're here uh, and that was another issue is that I had a very hard time getting people to stop I think people were were pretty uh, were pretty astonished by the size and scope of the con uh, and it was really hard to get an opening because you know I'll say hey how's it going I really like your shirt really cool cosplay and people don't break a step, and they sometimes did not even respond to me. Um, I, need, I need something. Like, sometimes when people give me a half second of attention, that's all I get, and so I have to strike, uh, and I have to, like, hand them a card or, like, start explaining to them what I'm doing here and what, what, I, what it is and why they should stop and look at it. Uh, and there were plenty of opportunities where people did give me that half second of attention, and I didn't... I didn't grab that opportunity. Um, but on the whole, for how many people were there, which I don't know if this was a record-breaking year for them, but I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people on Saturday alone. Uh, and so <sighs> it was just really distressing that I could not get people interested in my table. And I mentioned before, I was working with some new products, and I really wasn't pushing some of my older products. So I had some of my old t-shirt designs on display, but they ended up being on display back behind me, not actually front and center on the table. Specifically, my silly t-shirts, my Don't Be Weird, Grow a Beard, and the Sad Tape shirt. Like, those were probably the biggest money makers for me at this show in previous years. But I kinda wanna move away from those because even though I've told myself time and time again, t-shirts are okay, it's okay to sell those things and make money and still promote my comic while people buy unrelated merchandise from me, I, I kinda wanna move into some other products. And so I wasn't pushing those a lot. Um, and so people didn't really notice them because they weren't prominently displayed and because of that, I, I don't think that my display was interesting enough for people to really take note of it. Uh, so that's another thing I need to work on, is I need to figure out how can I draw people in, what can I change about my display that will draw people in. So anyway, now I'm kind of moving into, like, I'm moving away from some of the problems and challenges and thinking about what I need to do. So I really want to take some time and practice I have a six foot table. I want to figure out a good solid three foot display. I want to come up with a good solid four foot display and then a six foot display or an eight foot display because I have tables and I can practice and it doesn't hurt to take some time to figure out what looks good. 
Um, so I want to do that because that's something that I think could help me in the future. I won't have to continuously be adjusting during the show, um, which might turn people off because it's like that guy's still putting things up like he doesn't even know what he's doing. I think that maybe Planet Comic Con isn't a good show for me to go to uh, at this point. If I want to solely promote Nextus and Nextus related merchandise, so not funny like t-shirts that could appeal to a wider audience, um, I might need to focus uh, a little bit more carefully on which shows I attend uh, and make sure that it's a show that I'm more confident will have a large population of people who are looking for independently created comics and art. Um, and Planet Comic Con more and more each year has become a show that's a little bit more focused on like the entertainment aspect. So it's a big, you know, a big draw is their the celebrity row. Um, it doesn't mean that I can't have a good show at a convention that focuses on the celebrities, but historically I have not had as good shows that focus on celebrities and entertainment. Um, I tend to do a little bit better at shows that focus on comics and independent artists. And so that's something that I probably need to take into consideration. Uh, we'll see how the rest of the year goes and we'll see what Planet Comic Con looks like next year. But I can tell you that at this point, I really don't feel like it's a good show for me anymore. Uh, I think that it has, it has grown and evolved into something that is not as beneficial for me and for what the direction that I want to go in with how I sell things. Um, so that's something I'm going to, to kind of keep in mind. Uh, what else? I have some ideas for some, uh, some shelving, some display shelving that I would like to build uh, to be able to work in a smaller space and still effectively and nicely and professionally display my books. Now that I have four volumes, that's a lot. My little three-tiered clear case uh, doesn't hold all of the books in a way that you can see them and never really was that good at displaying all of the books because it kind of covers most of the cover. So I've got some ideas for that and I took some ideas from other artists' tables of like, hmm, that's a nice little display. I think I could probably make something like that or my dad could help me make something like that. So I've got a lot of ideas for new new display methods that I'd really like to try um, that I think would look better and make me feel a little more confident. Because that was another thing that I felt at the show, was just that, you know, even though it was limited space, I just I didn't feel in control of anything. It was just like, here's a bunch of stuff out on the table. Look at it. Like, I don't know. It, it was, and it was, uh, you know... One other challenge of it was just that because it was so hard to get people to stop and I had to work so hard for the few sales I was able to make, um, that it just really felt like I didn't know what I was doing. And it was hard for me to keep momentum and it was hard for me to keep like positive uh, and motivated. So I know I wasn't the only one who had a rough show. Uh, I talked to a lot of friends and a lot of other creators who were saying that they were having a slower show than they expected as well with how many people there were. Uh, and the general consensus was, yeah, it's because it's, it's kind of big. Um, you know, but again, there are, there are things that can be done about that. It doesn't mean that, like, I don't want you to, to watch this video and think, like, oh, Planet Comic Con isn't good for independent creators. Like, I'm sure that there are plenty of independent creators who had a great show. Um, it was just... There were a lot of things that kind of conspired to make it a difficult show for me. And just because something's hard doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. So I, I don't want to like say I'm bailing on Planet Comic Con and I'll never do it again. It's just, it really was, was quite a check for me of like, hmm, I can't just expect things to work out when I'm changing them. You know, like I, I changed a lot of things before this show. I have new products. I wasn't pushing products that had sold very well for me in the past. Um, you know, I, I need to be able to present myself in a way that, uh, that is effective. Um, and to some degree, too, I need to consider the audience. Uh, and it seems like Planet Comic Con 
might not be the best audience for me uh, at this point. So I'm going to keep you guys posted, and I'll probably do some videos about uh, about working on new displays, and I might I might make some videos about me doing like test tables and things like that, just so you get some kind of idea. Uh, I hope to have uh, at least a little more thought put into it before uh, SpringCon or MSPCon, uh, which is mid-May, so that's coming right up. Thanks for watching this particularly long TomCast. Uh, I do appreciate it, and uh, thanks for kind of letting me get some of this stuff out. Uh, you know, I was talking with, with Trey and Austin on the way back, and I talked with Patty about it when I got home last night. And, um, you know, I've just been thinking about it a lot, but it's it's... It was hard, and I did get depressed, uh, but, you know, I'm able to, after resting and thinking about it some, I'm able to look at the situation and say, all right, what, what do I take away, what do I do now? Um, and I think that's the important thing, is you think about, okay, now what? You know, so there was a hiccup or a failure or whatever you want to call it, now what? You don't just stop. You don't just say, well, I guess that's it. So, but anyway, for this episode, I guess that's it. And, uh, yeah, so keep your stick on the ice.